Apple announced iOS 10 today at WWDC and released the beta a little while ago. So I'm super pumped to show you the new features. So we're going to go hands on and see what it's all about. So the first feature Apple talked about was user experience. They redesigned the lock screen, added rich notifications, quick app interactions, and expanded on 3D touch options. They introduced feature like race to show the lock screen, which is a nice touch, but it's definitely something that's been on Android phones for a while. So this is certainly an instance where you would say Apple was playing catch up. But being able to interact with notifications on the lock screen with 3D touch and actually staying in the conversation is a welcome feature. The entire lock screen down to control center and notifications just looks way more streamlined. A little bit flatter if that's possible. Transparency isn't as prevalent here as it was in prior versions of iOS, which some people may or may not like, or they simply may not notice. The second feature Apple talked about with iOS 10 is Siri, and Siri is finally being opened up to third-party developers with its own SDK. Now the integration with her in the beta is not fully formed because there's not a lot of apps that are uh, featured in the beta right now, but it is something to look forward to come the fall to see how much this pushes Siri forward. Photos has also been updated to bring back a lot of the features that were previously available in iPhoto. Things like facial recognition, which Apple stressed would happen right on the device and really emphasize that privacy aspect definitely as a little shot to Google Photos. They're implementing things like object and scene recognition as well. And also a memories feature, which highlights where you were, the people you were with, a map of the locations, which seems like a pretty cool feature. And it will definitely be a hit with people when they want to reminisce about important events or vacations they went on. The next update is to Maps, which gets a whole new redesign and to me, definitely tries to invoke a very Google Maps feel and design, but it looks good, although I think a lot of people will just kind of shrug and not notice much of a difference. You could slide up from the bottom for suggestions on where to go, what to do, where to eat, and Apple also implemented a dynamic view finally, so you could pan and zoom on the map during navigation. But a very cool aspect is that they open up maps to third-party developers as well. So you will be able to have integration with apps like OpenTable to find a place to eat, then book a ride with Uber and pay for it with Apple Pay. Many people will be let down by the fact that Apple still won't allow you to make a different app your default app. So you can't make Google Maps your regular map app, which is going to disappoint a lot of people. Apple then moved on to Apple Music, which got the redesign that a lot of people were hoping for, but I personally see it as the design we deserve, but not the one we need right now. It looks good, but this was actually part of the keynote that you could tell received a pretty lukewarm reaction. The tabs at the bottom are all the same as they are currently for the most part, and I think a lot of people were expecting more. Personally, I enjoy Apple Music, but it does have some UI issues, and I don't necessarily know if they were addressed here since this is still a beta. They did integrate lyrics, which people will definitely like, and it does look like they killed off the connect feature. But I will say when you pick a song, it does begin to play almost instantaneously, which we'll see if that does still continue when iOS 10 is released in the fall. News also gets a redesign to bring it more in line with the Apple Music redesign. It looks good. I'm not sure if this is going to increase the readership that Apple is hoping for, but it definitely does have a little bit more of a streamlined feel. I would love to show you and talk to you a little bit about the new home app that Apple introduced as well in iOS 10, except for the fact that it is not functioning on the first beta. But it does look very promising. The only thing I don't like is that it will require Apple TV 4 to control the things in your home, which some people may or may not like. Now, Apple even touched on the phone app and gave the phone some love, redesigning the call lock screen, introducing some new VOIP features. But one thing I'm super excited for is voicemail transcripts, which is something myself and a lot of people have been asking for. Unfortunately, though, it's not working on the first beta. Now, an area where I was kind of surprised Apple introduced a lot of new interesting things was in iMessage, integrating larger emojis, dynamic bubbles, and implementing digital touch from the Apple Watch. 
full screen effects, but on top of all that, they are implementing their own app store for iMessage, which I thought is insanely cool. Essentially, a user could use Square Cash to transfer money to another user via a third party app plugin, which is really, really awesome. But one feature of iOS 10 that Apple didn't announce today may actually excite people the most. Yes, finally, Apple is allowing you to delete stock apps. So if you want to delete the new home app, you can. If you want to delete that stock app because you just can't stand it, you can. If you want to delete the iTunes store because you are Google Play for life, you finally can. Apple is giving the people what they want here and giving you a lot of control back to clear up your home screen, which is going to excite a lot of people. So overall, my impressions of the first beta of iOS 10 are pretty good. One area I am a little disappointed in Apple, though, is the lack of recognition to the iPad. I think a lot of iPad Pro owners like myself were hoping for some more enhancements and features to take advantage of the Pro's capabilities. Now, the first beta of iOS 10 does come with the Swift Playgrounds app installed, which I will say is definitely tailored to kids, but for Apple to essentially create what is its own Code Academy app is pretty great. And I think kids are really going to latch on to this. And this is going to be utilized a lot in public schools and other learning environments. So that is it for my hands-on with iOS 10, and those are my first impressions. Let me know what you think about iOS 10 in the comments below. I will be doing a hands-on with macOS Sierra, and that will be coming shortly. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're feeling awesome. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you guys later.